Uh, good day learners, in this video we are going to look at question 5 of the November 2018 question paper given the function fx is negative 1 over x minus 1. Right, so this is clearly a hyperbola question with the x under the um, line of the fraction. So I already know this is hyperbola, right, which I'm just going to write down the standard equation here for myself a over x minus b plus q this is what an hyperbola typically looks like so I can see in this question the a is negative 1 um, the p is positive 1 right the negative is there the p is positive 1 and the q value is 0 in this question that I'm working with here right to get fx is equal to negative 1 over x minus 1. Right, the q value is 0. Then they say first 5.1, write down the domain of f. Right, um, so the domain of f, um, domain for hyperbola, always the same. x is an element of r, but x is not equal to the p, which is the value of the vertical asymptote. The x is not going to cut that vertical asymptote ever. So the value of p, which is 1. x is an element of r, but x is not 1. All right, 5.2. Write down the asymptotes. Right, the asymptotes is x is equal to p, which is 1 and y is equal to q, which is 0. Okay, so there's the equations of my asymptotes. Sketch the graph of f, clearly showing all the intercepts with the axis and any asymptotes. So sketch the graph, 5.3. Right, um, I'm just quickly going to get this set of axes here, my, my um, horizontal asymptote is at y is equal to 0, which is on the x-axis. So y is equal to 0, and x is equal to 1 is an asymptote. x is equal to 1. x is equal to 1, right? And since the a value is negative, um, I know that the um, hyperbola should lie in quadrant 2 and 4 between the asymptotes. A positive a value places them there and the negative a value places them there. And from this that I have so far here, I can see the graph is not going to cut the x-axis because there's an asymptote there, right? But it is going to cut the y-axis there and I need to get that y-intercept. So the y-intercept I get by making in my equation minus 1 over x minus 1. I make the y 0 and then this gives me 1. So I have that intercept there, 1. The, the um, intercepts with the axis, the asymptotes, and that is all I need to show on the sketch. So I'm done with that. Easy enough. And then question 5.4 says for which values of x, for which values of x will x times f accent x be bigger or equal to 0? Right, so we've had questions like this in 2017 and 2016 paper where something multiplied with one another bigger than 0 means that um, I want something to be positive, bigger than zero is positive, and to get that, this product must be something positive times something positive, or something negative times something negative, yes? Okay, so I'm looking where x is positive or negative, which is the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis, and then um, where the derivative is either positive or negative, um, the derivative, is the gradient of the tangent, which is something that we learn in differential calculus and in all fairness, um, most of you grade 12s have not done differential calculus as of um, um, while we are doing this video, but I will explain through this anyways just in case, um, well, if you watch this after you've done differential calculus, you can use it. Um, if not, you can look at it and um, we're getting, we'll get to differential calculus soon enough and then um, he'll deal with that. What's important to know in differential calculus is that 
the differential, which is this, is the gradient of the tangent, right? So I'm looking at positive and negative gradient of the tangent, where a gradient is positive when it goes forward and negative when it, when it goes back, right? That's not too difficult. Um, so in this sketch, I'm going to look at the positive there. My x is negative, right? And on this side, my x is positive, right, which is that part. So I want to, to know whether the gradient is positive or negative. Now, if I look at the gradient of the tangent of this curve, can you see this gradient doesn't matter if I take it along the curve, but the gradient is going to be positive because the gradient of the tangent is lying forward. This is a... Um, increasing graph so the gradient you can see the gradient is going forward it's going forward um, steeper and less steep along the curve but it is going forward it's not going back so this gradient for the entire graph is positive right the gradient is positive for this entire graph so i can disregard this part because the gradient is positive the gradient is just positive so i want to know basically where for which values of x on the positive x axis where the gradient is positive this will be true so on the positive x axis where the gradient is positive well that's everywhere except at one so um, x can be anything bigger or equal to zero um yeah x can be anything bigger or equal to zero, just not one. Okay, because at one, um, I don't have a positive or a negative gradient. There's, there's no asymptote, there's no graph. I mean, um, all right, so x can be anything bigger than zero for that, that part to be true. I mean, I don't want to look at the negative x-axis part. I want to look at the positive x-axis where the gradient is positive, which is everywhere except at one where there's no gradient. So um, on the positive x-axis everywhere except one. Okay, so that is question five. And I'll see you in the next video, hopefully, for question six. Um, I hope you have a great day and I hope you are staying safe.